Welcome to the History Hunter. Welcome to our small adventures with the World War II time frame. Look at the sunrise. It is spectacular here. It is History Hunter and Eagle Eyes. Mr. Eagle Eyes, Eagle Eyes. Yep. We are here to show you some magnificent World War II history. So why don't you join us and let's go out and find the path together right now. This area here used to be a very important and strategically important position for the Germans. It decided which vessels could come in to a very important stretch of, uh, you can almost say a huge river. So what they did, they placed a um, artillery position with three uh, artillery guns, flak guns in combination with being able to take out vessels and they also managed to put a fire and control bunker and some other bunkers further up there. But what we're going to do first now is to find the um, gun bunkers and then we're going to work ourselves back to higher grounds and we're going to see where they had control of the gun bunkers. So we are on this epic road tri trip, World War II road trip made possible by all of you. I want to say a massive thank you for that. Thank you for supporting us letting us have the opportunity to go out there. Thank you to all our Patreon PayPal supporters and uh, for all of you who support us on Super Thanks. It is greatly appreciated and it enables us to go out and find these locations that you see. And uh, just want to say a massive thank you for that. First little thing you can see here is a feature which is very typical when you come to the beach areas. That is what we call a Panzerspell. It's just an obstacle that was used on the beaches to prevent the uh, invasion of the Allied vehicles and uh, troops. And these will be lined up like thousands on a row. There'll be cables in between, barbed wire in between, and also you will have mines and trip wires, several layers of that. It's so cool to see one of these. I'm actually going to build me one of these. It's going to take a lot of work, but I'm um, going to build me one of these actually as a copy, a replica of one of the original ones. And then I'm going to put it in my yard. I'm just going to enjoy the view of it. <laughs> one of the first clues that you can see that there was some kind of activity here are these concrete layouts. Or inlays. That is because the Germans had to transport heavy-duty concrete and rebars and gear to get the um, bunkers uh, finished. And uh, there's one there, there's one there, and there's one over there. So we're going to have a look at them first, and then, as I said, we're going to go back to the area where they had the fire control bunkers and all of that. All of this is a part of the Atlantic Wall, the fortification line stretching from the top of Scandinavia to the bottom of France. Tens of thousands of structures. Hitler said, build me a wall of defense systems. And they did. And today you can see pieces of that all over Europe. Some of them are in the totally original condition, but others have been completely transformed and put into use for something else. And that's what we're going to see here. These gun bunkers are not the same as they used to be. And that is what we're going to show you. So in this forest, they started to build this in 1942 and they did finish it. And that is actually the first position. But the strange thing is that these are not your regular kind of flak gun towers. These have, as I said, been totally transformed from what they were supposed to be. And uh, this, one, this one has actually been under attack by the Allies. Yeah, and I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna show you that. But inside here, there used to be a flak position, a uh, Flugzeugabwehrkanon, anti-aircraft gun that it could also hit uh, targets which are out there in the sea. Mm -hmm. 
So, this heavy duty bunker used to be the crew quarter for the flat crews. And you can see here, these holes are actually the attacks of the allies coming in and do, 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 do. yeah, I'm gonna show them to it because that's very cool to see such an array of the obstacles, beach obstacles. And you can see these huge plates that's put there. It's just to prevent you to go inside the bunker. Some places they do that. I hate it, but there's no way we can kind of do anything about that. But you can see it's been attacked heavily here. And you can also see the original camouflage paint uh, on them. Can you see that? So the original camouflage paint is all over this structure. And it is huge. Absolutely huge huge so out there that's the stretch of ocean which they wanted to protect and that's the inlay to a very important uh, German installation so if you follow the waterways all the way in here you'll come to a very very highly profiled German installation again you can see here the structure is enormous and it's just about to protect uh, your investment, namely your gear and your crew. And that is why they built them so huge and strong. And they're categorized in different kind of levels, like L stands for Lichter, means light armor. And this is a Ständige ST, and that means it can take a lot more punishment. Did you know that you can become a World War II History Hunter team member and the artifacts here could be passed on to you? In this manner and fashion here, by creating beautiful World War II dioramas and displays, you can be the future keeper of something very, very special by the history and the history hunting that we share together. Check out the link in the video description, you can click that and you can become a patron team member if you want to. Different kind of perks with For Your Eyes Only videos, travel vlogs, restoration projects, all of that good stuff. And if you want to know more, check out the supporter videos in the beginning of each month. But now let's continue our little adventure. There is something very special here that I'm going to show you, which is actually very weird, but uh, I'm going to show you that in a minute. There's another one of the uh, beach obstacles. This one, I always offered two of these original ones at a location very, very far away from where we live. And this gentleman had like seven or eight of them. And he, the story behind them were also amazing. And they were not on the beach, but nevertheless, he gave me two of these, but I couldn't figure out how to get them back because they're rusted, you can't dismantle them. And I just calculated it would cost me around 4,000 US dollars to transport them. So I just said, no thanks, but thank you for the offer. So you can actually come to the top and check it out. They've been doing quite a lot of things here after the war. Right here, that's where the 88 millimeter stood. And this is where they had munition storages and uh, rangefinders. And you can see it's basically a anti-aircraft gun position on top of this massive bunker, which is crew quarter. At the same, has all the necessary gear to protect the crews and operate the gun and have control of the area. So this structure on the top here was never there. I don't know why that is here, but I guess it's got something to do with some post-war military thing, I don't know. But you can see right here, that is where the gun was placed on a huge pedestal. This thing here is made after the war, so it kind of doesn't fit the picture here. Um, pockets of munition perhaps, range finders, I'm not sure. Could it be that they had 20 millimeter instead of uh, 88s? I'm not a hundred percent sure, because this place is a little bit out of there uh, for our knowledge, but um, it's very interesting. Now I'm gonna let you come and join me down on the ground again. <laughs> I'm gonna show you something really cool. What you're gonna see here is very rare. There's a complete cluster of the uh, Tank spells, they're everywhere. 
and uh, that is absolutely spectacular. Never seen so many of them just piled up here and they were a part of the defensive system here and uh, pretty spectacular. All of these are 100% original and they were collected from the beach area down there. It looks like it's just been stacked up here and then I don't know, they just left to rust. They should have been kind of taken care of, maybe sandblasted, you know, treated for rust, corrosion, all of that, and then put on display. That would be very cool. But that is a very special site, and uh, not often you're going to come across that. Second one, it's been completely painted green has this structure on top as well and it seems like an add-on or something they're also working on a a huge mast or whatever communication thing on the side here so it's not easy to record that area but i can definitely see that sometimes sometime they painted this green and you can see they are really really big absolutely really really big and you can see the beach here is down here all of this further down here was mined with around 1200 uh, telemines and 450 s mines so it was heavy duty protected okay we are being allowed inside this thing here is an extension this is where the original bunker starts so that is cool. You can finally see what's inside here. That is a shutter to keep you out. If the video pauses here, it's because I have a glitch in the app for this phone that I'm using to record. So I just start over again if you see it stops here. There used to be these massive doors. You can see they always torch them off because they are worth a ton of money as in just pure metal. Wow, this place is actually pretty big. I think this is the shutter room where you have a second shutter so you can take out whoever comes in there. And then uh, some weird paint schemes here, white and br everything. <laughs> so it's very moist in here because they once upon a time um, lined it with wood. All of this is not original. That valve is actually original but I can really feel the moist air, so I'm not gonna stay here too long. And you can see another room here. This is just a tiny little room where they could have had some kind of air pump going. And uh, I'm gonna go down here. You can see they've all been lined. <laughs> but this is the layout. This is what the Germans built. And I think that the uh, local army has used this after the war as either accommodation or training facility something like that and i think there could be some more interesting things further in here because i can hear eagle eye is quiet and then there's very often something of interest then let's see bad air in here. yeah very bad air very uh, moist yeah, I'm going to come out as well. They cut through the bunker here to get some stuff up to that thing we saw. And it's heavy duty thick. You can see all of the rebars pointing out. And it's like over a meter thick. This, um, is that a shutter? I'm not sure. That's one of the Von V valves. These valves are used for the pressure. If there's a pressure. Um, wave coming from the outside it will shut and make sure that you cannot harm the um, crews inside yeah that's a shutter for this exit which was actually the door we saw and uh, yeah all of these electronics here are of course modern so but the layout is completely the German stuff, there is actually also tiles on the floor. And what they did when they did this is that they completely forgot that these bunkers, they do not breed very well. They are very, very difficult to keep dry. You have to heat them constantly, 24 seven. 
And if you don't, well, there's a fungus and all kinds of crap going on. And I can really feel that here. So we're just gonna leave. Pretty amazing to walk in here in the footpath of these men who served here with the flak guns and to know that they were commanded to be here. They didn't, many of them didn't go voluntarily. They had to go, it was war. So these forests, they have so many stories, I guess. We'll never know all of it, but it's fascinating to be here and just kind of be able to walk around and see these features. And that's what we do. We greatly appreciate you being here. And the uh, YouTube algorithm doesn't favorize so much more what this type of uh, content is, the history and World War II history. So if you want to help us out, you can watch the videos in full. You can comment, give us a likes, a thumbs up. And don't forget it, when the video is finished, just don't just leave. Have the courtesy to kind of support us by those small gestures. So we can kind of grow and expand because we're not here for the short run. We've done this for many, many years, but as I said, the YouTube algorithm is not that favorable anymore for this kind of content. So we're really struggling to keep up the view numbers and we can kind of get some ranking and all of that. So thank you for being here. Nevertheless, this is the third one. Uh, this one seems to be having a roof as well. Is that a little add-on on the side there? I'm not too sure. But it's massive, absolutely massive. And it's so fascinating to see how big they are. And they will be here for a long time. That little thing there, <clears throat> very often it's an emergency exit. Does that mean there are two stories in this one, Eagle Eyes? It's like a first and second story. I'm not sure. This is most likely the front part where the opening is. Again, it's been completely shut with huge panels. And that's a bit strange. You can walk right into the other one and these are shut with these massive panels. It's that special. You can see I even had sewer systems. So, shot with these massive panels, but uh, I'm not sure whether we'll be able to get inside, but these are humongously big. You have to be next to them to really feel the size of them. Uh, they will be here for a very long time, and if they did it right, they would take off the graffiti, clean that, make a little staircase going up, put up some info, sheets and laminate them, attach them in some frames, tell people what happened, tell them what war, World War II was all about. And in that way, in your generation, and everybody can learn more about what that actually was. Today is more like a sofa sitting, click, 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 generation growing up. And uh, this is what they need to know. This is what they need to learn. And that is why I bring my son, Eagle Eyes, to these locations, because I want him to learn I want him to educate himself and to know the value, the true value of life. Absolutely know for sure how appreciative you have to be for what you're living in. Free world, free spirit, free country. And I think that is extremely important. And for me as a single dad, being able to do that, I take much pride and honor in doing that. And um, I hope that others will do it as well, because in that way we can educate our children, especially the children, to know exactly the true value of peace and uh, being a free spirit in a free world. Yes, for me that is very important to be able to let my son grow up and be a free spirit in a free world. But this place here has got a little bit more for us in store. And uh, we were now here down at the flag positions on the ocean line. And we saw the gun positions, we saw the panzer uh, obstacles. Uh, we saw, well, you didn't see it, but there was a huge minefield there and there was this huge trench system running around. But further up behind this anti-aircraft gun position, there is something very special going on. 
See here, all of this took place just a few hundred meters in the back. And what is all of that about? Well, that is what we're gonna find out in part two, otherwise the video will be too long. So I'll put a link in the video description for part two. You'll find it here where it says more, let me show you. Just click that link and you will see the part two. And I highly suggest you do that because this is a very interesting place because the Germans did something here which you very rarely see the Germans did or, or, or managed to do. And they were very sloppy with what they did here. And you're gonna see that. And that is very, very rare to see because it was getting to the end of the war and the resources and material were kind of scarce. And that is really special because that really shows it here. All right, if you like what you see and you want to help us to reach more kind of locations and places to go and share with you, we have this little super thanks thing here. Just a little thing for you to help us out to put some gasoline onto the tank and off we go. And we can share hundreds more videos for you to enjoy. Other than that, this is also a very easy way to help us out. And actually because of the YouTube algorithm is such a crappy thing for history channels today. If you watch the videos in full length, each and every one of them, and watch more of our videos in full length, you won't believe how much you can help us to stay up there in the algorithm. So our videos are suggested and promoted to other enthusiasts out there. All right, thank you all. Thank you all our Patreon team members. Thank you all who donate to the PayPal thing. And if you want to watch that video in the beginning of each month for the supporters, you can see the perks that our Patreon team members have. All right, we'll definitely see you out there in part two. Stay safe, keep smiling, and uh, see you later.